Hi, I am out on travel, so this is a hotel room video. Please don't hate me, I'm sorry. In a lot of other videos, I've showcased how you can automate interactions with the website, whether you're on the command line using tools like curl or in scripting languages like Python, where you can use libraries and packages, modules like requests. But I haven't showcased how we might be able to automate this or scrape different websites that might be in the dark web using Tor hidden services or dot onion addresses. So in this video, that's what we're going to dive into. Thankfully, this is really easy to do. So I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine. I'll hit Control Alt T on my keyboard to open up a terminal, F11 to full screen, zoom in to make this text a little bit easier for you to read. And I will go ahead and install Tor just as a service that might run in the background so that I could tunnel through the Onion router and access some of those dark websites like dot onion addresses moving through different relays and nodes across that network. We'll sudo apt install tack Y to automatically confirm, enter my password for Kali, and then go ahead and install Tor. Now, one command that is actually bundled with the Tor package is this thing called Torify. And if I actually wanted to take a look at the man pages for that, we could see it is a wrapper for Tor socks and Tor. So like a socks proxy, how we might move through and have some network communication through that protocol. Think of this like proxy chains on the command line. You could basically put it in front of other commands you'd want to run, and and that tunnels your traffic all through Tor. I'll hit Q to get out of that. So say I were to use curl on the command line and access just ifconfig.so, and that will give me, hey, my current public IP address. I'm fine with that. But if I wanted to wrap that through Torify, let's see if I could get that to come through for me. Mm, not working all that well. Turns out we actually need to configure and enable that inside of the Tor configuration file. So I could sudo nano, etc. Etc. Tor and Tor RC for that configuration file. And having this open in our text editor, I want to scroll through and try to find the configuration settings that I'll change. In this case, we want to enable the control port. We want to ensure that is uncommented. And you could add a little bit more security here. As it notes, if you enable the control port, be sure to enable one of these authentication methods to prevent attackers from accessing it. So you could add your own hashed control password. For the sake of simplicity, just cruising through this demo, I won't do that, but I will actually uncomment, and again, maybe you had an Octothorpe or hashtag present there, for cookie authentication, and this value was originally the number one. I'll toggle that just to zero, inside nano, control O to save the file, control X to exit, and with that, I will service, I think Tor restart is all that we should need to go ahead and restart that service. Now, fingers crossed, I'll be able to do this torify curl command, and finally get a new IP address, separate from what I would have had originally, just naturally going through Tor, or without Tor in this case, but through Tor on that end. Toggling on that control port and manipulating and changing some of the authentication to actually interact with the Tor service and maybe authenticate or change your IP address or manipulate what routes or nodes that you move through is kind of optional and sometimes, but honestly, probably good to do for this case. Case. However, in some tools that you might use, it's not always necessary. And of course, this was just a cutesy example trying to see our current IP address to validate that we're moving through Tor. But we might be asking, actually, why would we even do this? Why would you want to scrape or interrogate or automate interactions with like dot onion addresses? Things that we haven't even dug into yet, but consider all of the threat intelligence or just, hey, maybe tracking cybercrime and threat actors and adversaries that you might be able to do with that if you build and create your own threat intelligence feed or automate what's out there on Onion sites. You might liken this to some really awesome tools like Flare, that awesome cyber threat intelligence and attack surface management solution where attackers, threat actors, and adversaries no longer have the information advantage because you can get out in front of it. Let me log in here super quick. Spinning up our dashboard, we can take a look at our threat risk assessment, our exposed attack surface, and maybe get a better understanding of 
look, how secure are we and our business, our organization and our company? Are there any leaked credentials? Are there any personal identifiable information or PII that's out across the dark web or even the clear net in shady cybercrime telegram groups or for sale on marketplaces or within data breaches? All of that awesome stuff we could dig into within Flare. And even on top of that, getting a better idea as to what cyber criminals are up to and what damage they're doing. Like I tend to track ransomware threat actors and adversaries that do damage encrypting the devices and data of companies and businesses. We could see, oh, play ransomware or 8Base or Lockbit 3.0, what they're up to and what data they might be dumping for those victims. That could be really worthwhile information to keep tabs on. And honestly, we could just use this as basically a Google across the dark web and do just global searches for any severity of a threat or information exposure or risk that we want to track in any of these different categories like the open internet, leaky S3 buckets, GitHub repositories, or pastebin posts, maybe just then the dark web, marketplaces where malware could be bought and sold, forum posts where threat actors are chatting with each other, or Telegram, the real social media for cybercrime. Look, I could just look for, oh, info stealer malware, I'll put that in quotes, and then we'll see what's popping up. Maybe, hey, I'll go ahead and change the date just to say, look, I'll do a custom range here so we aren't getting anything super duper recent about November 2023 up to just the start of December 2023. And if I search for this, look at all of the crazy shenanigans that we might be able to dig into. And of course, you'll actually get all of the links, all of the references. Flair will just outright give that to you alongside the actor, maybe some uh, summary of the content, whether or not you want to take down information that's pertinent to you, your company, your business, and then maybe some artificial intelligence to help translate Russian languages or again, vernacular that you're not familiar with. Like, I totally can't read that. I don't understand that language. <laughs> oh, here's a good example. Looks like AI was able to offer a quick synopsis, a little bit of a summary here, the details it's worth digging into, and even some remediation or mitigation guides. You could, of course, create your own identifiers for things that you want to track, like your business, your company, your name, whatever you want, and maybe track down, oh, the flow of threats as to what might feed into the other as associated events and trends across the cybercrime or threat intelligence industry and supply chains. Just as well, if ransomware attacks actually have a third party, maybe trickle down effect onto your world. Anyway, I'm driving down that road to note how we might be able to dig into those threat actors, cybercrime, and stuff out on the dark web that we might want to track. So just as an example, this is an onion link that I'm actually viewing through the Tor browser. Hey, that graphical user interface, the web browser to just simply go to any onion address that we want to big long V3 URL with a dot onion TLD or top level domain. You can't naturally access that with curl, but if we funnel it through Tor or maybe scrape it in Python, we totally could. Let me get back to Cali and I'll show you. Look, if I were to try to curl that big long ransomware URL, that was a page that had a listing of those different ransomware groups and maybe their own onion leak sites that we might want to keep track of. Unfortunately, curl will tell us, hey, we don't know how to do that in this case. Not going to resolve an onion address, but we might be able to tell curl, look, we have Tor set up and installed. We should actually still pull that info because if I were to try and Torify this, I think it'll still whine at me, but we could tell Tor, excuse me, we could tell curl, look, let's actually use a Sox5 host name and we'll specify our current local host 127001 with our port 9050, which is that default port that the Tor service will listening on. Not the control port in this case, because we're not manipulating or tweaking and tuning some Tor settings, but we just want that SOX proxy to funnel through. If I add these arguments in and then I paste my URL, fingers crossed, we'll be able to pull down this Onion site across the dark web in an automated way, not using just a Tor browser. Let me hit enter on this and hopefully I got that syntax right. Takes a little bit because we're funneling through all those nodes, but take a look. Now we've got all of the HTML specific to that exact web page and looks it's listing out all of those different gangs, all those different sites, all those illicit underground cybercrime syndicates and includes a couple other links that we might be able to dig into. That's pretty cool, at least for a one off on the command line curl, we could pull down onion sites. Now, of course, the better question, well, okay, how do we automate that in maybe a scripting language like Python? 
Let me show you how. On the command line, inside of our Kali Linux or whatever virtual machine you might like, we could use pip to install a new Python library. I'll go ahead and pip install requests underscore Tor, and that will allow us to make requests across Tor. We'll go ahead and install that, get it staged and set up for us, and then I'll create a new script. Maybe requests Tor testing.py. And now inside my text editor, I'll add my usual shebang line, using bin environment python3 and we'll go ahead and import requests underscore tor. But truthfully there is one sort of sub module or piece of data in this package that I'm most interested in. So I'll actually change that from requests tor. I want to go ahead and import requests tor with a capital R capital T and no underscore in this case. Now with that module imported we can go ahead and create sort of a client or the way we could interact with it and if you wanted to get used to, oh, just how you naturally type requests.get or requests.post when you use some scripting language stuff in Python like this, we can call that object just requests. And I'll create a new requests tor object and I'll pass in some parameters here. We'll specify tor ports, like the actual proxy ports that tor might be listening on, 9050 as we saw, and I'll add a comma there just to denote, hey, that's usually a tuple, we just gotta make sure that value's set. And I'll actually supply another Tor C ports for our control port, that 9051 that you saw set in the Tor configuration file. That should be 9051. With that set and staged, again, this is super duper simple. All we need to do is a usual requests.get and we can supply any URL that could still be a dot onion address across the dark web. Let me define a variable for that here. We'll just paste in the ransomware sites we had been using previously and I'll define that as a variable. Let me capture that and we'll print out the response or the text of that request.get. Just like we normally do in Python. And actually, since that is usually just one port, we should toggle that variable name, the keyword argument to Tor C port, singular, no S at the very, very end. Now again, super simple, with all this set, I can get back to my command line and let's try to run my Python 3 requests tor testing.py script. Fingers crossed, again, it'll take a little bit because we're tunneling through all that traffic, but look, we have all that output and we can, in an automated way, within Python, interact with those dark web URLs, .v3 onion addresses, and tor hidden services. This is all the actual output, the raw HTML, and the source of the web page that's returned to us when we view this in our Tor browser in that graphical user web browser interface here. But let me actually go pull this a little bit further because again, we're not doing anything too crazy, but we're just demonstrating that we can access Onion sites. Let me see if I can pull down that Elf V or Black Cat ransomware blog and maybe we could track, oh, specific new updates on leak sites or maybe get the alerts when we're seeing new changes across the dark web. Let's use this as an example. I'll go back to my my script and of course we could make this whatever we want but let's just change that URL to now get to Alf V and their leak site. Back to the command line, super easy, we'll just run this one more time but take a look at what we've got here. Obviously requesting a new page and we'll get the HTML that gives us some interesting breadcrumbs. Scrolling up to the top here, this tells us oh the website has been seized and this is actually kind of a little gimmick, a little bit of a trick, an exit scam that that threat actor, ransomware gang, Alf V and Black Cat had been up to recently where they're trying to scam out a lot of their affiliates. The whole cyber threat intel community and a lot of infosec pros were digging into this previously, but if we took a look at the webpage, here I'll get back to that ransomware leak site, take a look, if we open the link, that brings us to the this website has been seized page, and it is looking like, oh, a formal official law enforcement operation to take down that ransomware gang and their online presence in the leak site. However, it's something that a lot of folks have been tracking and saying, look, it's not. I even wanted to get my head straight on this over on Twitter or X or whatever, and was just validating, hang on, was this an April Fool's joke or was it still the exit scam, whatever, or is this a real interdiction? And some folks chimed in, look, that is still the exit scam. I thanked them and they linked this really cool little thread and write up from Fabian here. I love the fact that they end up changing the file path, just like we saw if we were digging into the actual HTML source code of the application 
information, just like we saw from our Python code output. Look, if you actually dig into this, you can see maybe even the stupid copy pasta clone mirroring any open directory that would like save page as for any regular actual law enforcement interdiction and takedown. I think that's just a little cool bit and worthwhile to mix in here. Now, hey, if you wanted to dig into any of these resources online, there are a lot of references, articles, blogs, and write-up that showcase even Torify, like we started with some of the tricks that you got in the mix, and maybe some of the control port communication, altering or tweaking some of the settings, maybe getting a new IP address through all the nodes, relays, and tunnels, alongside the documentation, or at least the sort of public page showcasing that requests Tor package and library in Python. You could dig into and actually see a little bit more of what you might be able to do here. I do like the advanced you should section where they show you, look, you could very easily just check your IP, get a new identity, test some things, or make any other HTTP method request that you want. And look, I'll be the first to admit, maybe you have another solution or a better tool or a better trick, some techniques to actually accomplish this, script and automate some scraping of Tor hidden services, VT unread addresses, or the dark web. There's TorPy just as well, a pure Python implementation of the Tor protocol. So you don't even need to have that Tor client installed like we did to begin with, or STEM or other libraries that we might be able to dig into. They showcase this with some command line examples that are really kind of slick, and even a little bit of the Python syntax itself, if you wanted to import it and use it within your own code and scripts. Here's another simple one, Tor requests. You can find this online, and that's pretty basic, pretty similar, just like we did with requests underscore Tor. Import this thing. Hey, you could have a context manager if you wanted to, request.get as usual, and that is one easy way to do it. You could have maybe a little bit more communication there and actually stage and set up some of the passwords like the client or control port authentication. And let me actually dive into that a little bit. This resource, Dasan Madar, is actually really awesome because it talks a little bit about all of this. It actually offers some more links, lets you install Tor just as we did to begin with, take a look at the version, go ahead and check out the status of that service, bounce, restart, stop and start as you need to, and then maybe even interact with that control port. Super duper simple. You can just try to authenticate, but once you validate, hey, we actually have the control port running, configured and set in our RC file, then maybe you could authenticate and set up a new hashed password. Just like we saw in that file, you could generate one with just a simple command, tor tac tac hash hyphen password, and whatever you want, slap that into the config file, and you're good to go. You can do your authentication, you can then check your IP with Torify, you could then manipulate and change your IP address, or you can even use STEM, one really awesome library that lets you manipulate and do a little bit more fine tuning with a lot of the relays or nodes that you travel and traverse through while you move through that Tor onion router protocol. You can validate this with other tools like Privoxy. You could go ahead and dig into other libraries that might change your own IP address. So there is a lot out there and it's just a matter of Googling and playing with what you're interested in. I do want to give another shout out to this Medium article because it digs into a really cool use case of Tor within Python. And they dig into that STEM library, or that Python module that I just kind of alluded to with a little bit more detail on how you could dig into specific relays or nodes that you move through. They have some cool visuals and they set up using stem. And this, I think, gives you a little bit more of an idea for the syntax or code that you might be able to use and get some better fine tooth comb granularity in what you're going to do as you move through Tor. But at the end of the day, look, it's still automating interaction with Onion websites across the dark web, Tor hidden services. And if you want, you can scrape whatever data like, oh, ransomware updates or potential breaches or just changes or modifications to forums that you might be tracking, marketplaces where you want to see whether or not things are actually being modified, up, down, sales, reviews, anything that is worth your attention, you could put together with your own code if you'd like to build out something custom. But I will acknowledge, look, there's a whole lot out there and there's almost too much of it. It's a little overwhelming. And look, if you just want a solution that's quick and easy, already done for you and manages this with so much insane telemetry and visibility, please do take a look at Flare. Big thanks to Flare for sponsoring this video. They are seriously incredible. They have so much cool data. And I love just being able to look around and see what threats are out there and know and assess my own attack surface. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, in the hotel, because I'm still on travel. So this is it for a little bit. <laughs>